Joining me in studio right now, uh, we've got a big city council meeting coming up on Thursday. That would be tomorrow night, uh, where the city council will most likely decide on the budget. And joining me in studio right now, uh, two members of the Lubbock City Council, uh, Councilwoman Karen Gibson and Councilman uh, Jeff Griffith, uh, both in studio today to talk about the proposed budget and their ideas and maybe some of the ideas that uh, run counter to the popular ideas, I guess uh, you could say right now, for the uh, Lubbock City Council. Uh, Council members, thanks for coming in today. Good morning, Thank you. Chad. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Uh, absolutely. This has been a long process uh, for the, the budget. always is, and it's one of those where uh, not everyone always gets exactly uh, what they want uh, as, as far as the budget goes. But uh, tell us right now where we are in the uh, budget process and, and what you think will actually be voted on or if it's everything's going to be voted on uh, on Thursday night. Well, everything will be voted on on Thursday night because what where we're at right now is back to where we began, um, back with the uh, 56 cents, the rollback. And that is the one that Councilwoman Joy proposed originally. Um, so that that's basically, we went through all of that last week and, and really had some good discussions. I brought up a, an amendment to where we would not have to have a tax increase at all. Uh, and then Councilman Girl brought up an amendment to have a tax increase uh, to, I guess it was what, point fifty three eight, and then Councilwoman Joy had a tax increase, a little bit more than than that I believe. And, but um, at the end of the council meeting, we went back to the original <coughs> amendment or the original um, rollback rate. Rollback, which was, uh, and it's 56, I believe is what it is. So that's where we're going to begin again tomorrow night. And we'll see what amendments come tomorrow night. Now, when, when this, when, when, when the rollback rate of what, 56.573 mm-hmm. cents, mm-hmm. when that was first brought up, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but when that was first brought up, there were members of the council who said, okay, we, we want this so that way we can have some, just some room. But right. we're going to bring this back down, right? That that was at least you know by a couple of members. That's you know what what mm-hmm. was mentioned that we're going to bring this back down. It's not going to be that fifty six point five seven three cents uh, rollback rate. But as of right now, it's still at that. Correct. That's where it's at okay. today. So what what is y'all's plan, Councilman Gibson? You you said that you you had a proposal that would say no tax increase. We don't need a tax increase right now. Uh, where where are y'all on this, and how many votes do you ha- do you think you have on this, and and what would that look like compared to the the, the rate increase that Councilman Geralt and, and Councilwoman uh, uh, Joy? I proposing? go back to we still we do not need a tax increase. Um, I I still say we don't need a tax increase with with the valuations that came in. Um, quite a bit higher than what we had expected and what we have um, in the general fund balance. I, I believe those two steps can handle no tax increase, not take away from any of the maintenance that we have, not take away from any of the services that we have. We have to look at what's coming um, in the future. We, we're going to have approximately $50 million on Citizens Tower. We're going to have... Uh, about twenty million on the police department. We've got we have got big projects coming in the future mm-hmm. that we're going to have to look at. I, I do think, um, as far as votes for no tax increase, I think there's probably um, if you know you hate to count heads, but I think there's three of us right. that that say no tax increase that agree that this year we just don't need it, and, and we don't need it this year and can still do everything that's in the budget without that tax increase. So, so why do we have council members who are proposing a tax? What are they adding to the budget that would raise taxes? Well, um, you've, Councilwoman Joy and Councilman Girl both are looking at bringing down the pilot fees and the franchise fees. I, I know that's been on a lot of people's minds, but in, and um, I, I believe – the mayor and I both um, are, are looking looking at it the same way. We're just saying it differently. I, I think there needs to be a plan, 
um, I, I think there needs to be some something done to look at how that's going to basically work in the budget. You have to know how much that costs the city, how much it's going to, and, and what those services cost. And, and the mayor made a comment, and I totally agree with him. What do we pay for those services and what are the value of those services and so you have to analyze that and that has not been done and so you have to have that plan in place before you just start cutting those services to see exactly what are those and you in in my opinion you can't just start cutting those services without knowing what that plan is going to be Visiting with uh, Councilman Karen Gibson, also uh, Councilman Jeff Griffith uh, in studio. And uh, Jeff, obviously, you have also been, uh, you know, uh, spending a lot of time with the budget, and you're on board with uh, no tax increases needed right now. What are, what are some of the things besides what <clears throat> Councilwoman Gibson has brought up? What are some of the things that you've looked at and said, okay, th- th- this is not needed at this moment? Most people realize that uh, their property taxes have gone up residentially and commercially all across this city in the past year. Uh, Valuations are way up, as Councilwoman Gibson alluded to. Chad, the big thing is that we've got uh, enough money to operate our budget with what these, we've already had a tax increase, is what is my point. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. Once you get that LCAD statement, we've already had a tax increase, very sizable one for a lot of folks. I've, I've talked to very, very few people that theirs went down. She mentioned the future projects we've got for downtown. And uh, this is something we're committed to on this council. I believe everybody is. But we do have – so what we're saying is you're, we're going to have a tax increase again next year or the year after because of these big projects. We had to take care of our police department. You, you, you and I have discussed this before and been through it. The point is that we've we've got those projects on board. We're going through with it. It looks like uh, future councils will probably continue it, hopefully, because it's much needed. And the point is we're going to have tax increases futuristically because of this. So I do uh, agree with her totally that we can we need to stay we need to live within our means right now because we are going to have expenses futuristically and we've already had a tax increase by the way everybody that from my district i've heard from only two that said please i mean everybody else that i've heard from within my district says do not please raise our taxes Uh, you you say that in the future there's going to be tax increases you you look at citizens tower you look at uh uh, current city hall that will eventually be turned into the new police station there's going to be money needed for that if we let me play devil devil's advocate here uh and i'm sure you've heard this uh, maybe from even some members on the on the council right now who are for a tax increase now if we have a tax increase now does that mean less of a tax increase in the future in other words are we are, are y'all proposing no tax increase right now? But hey, next year you're going to get really hit compared to this year. N- not in my opinion, no, I, not the way um, it's being proposed at all. Because that what they're proposing, all of this money go into, no, they're proposing the money for the tax increase this year that they're proposing, um, or. And and I'm telling you, it was the amendment previously. Now, they are working on another amendment. I don't know what they'll bring tomorrow, but it was to go into the to, – to decrease the franchise and pilot fees. So um, that would, in my opinion, be no. For franchise fees are to take care of our alleyways, and we have over 900 – I believe it's 900 miles of alleyway. The the, the franchise fees are to uh, – we've got a lot of expense taking care of alleys, and it's not just a landscape crew or pool service or Suddenlink or AT&T or NTS or Atmos that's using our alleyways. Obviously, uh, we're, we're blessed that we've got alleys in this city. But uh, t- that way we don't have to have trash out front. 
and you've got space between you and your neighbors. For us West Texas folks, that like a little space. <laughs> but but franchise fee does pay for something. It's not. Uh, it, it yes, it's a it's a tax. Whether you call it a fee, or I mean, or, or the pilot, either one. So it is necessary to have franchise fee, in my opinion. Um, there is one point that uh, that was very, in my opinion, very well done by Councilwoman Joy when she she's made a point of uh, she wanted to use some of the money in the t- her her proposal to go towards street maintenance because we've been funding that we've been financing that and that's a big negative so I applaud her approach in this I really do um, we're cutting down on that on the use of finance and bonding out street maintenance and it will get better but the point is that our citizens are already taxed enough in my opinion uh we'll go ahead we'll take the break when we come back uh we'll uh, talk more about the budget if you have any questions uh about the budget hey you got two council members right here they're they're saying no tax increases needed at this time if you have a question uh for council members uh jeff griffith or karen gibson give us a call 770-5790 toll free 1-800-687-0790 we'll be right back chad easty show All right, we're back on the Chad Eastie Show, News Talk 790 KFYO. In studio with me, uh, Councilwoman Karen Gibson and also Councilman Jeff Griffith. We've got a city council meeting coming up Thursday over at Lubbock City Hall, where as of right now, the at least the uh, the way the winds are blowing, it looks like we're going to have a tax increase. Uh, Councilwoman Gibson and Councilman Jeff Griffith, uh, they're in studio saying no need for a tax increase this year. Uh, Absolutely no need for it. Let me ask you this, because this is one of the things that we've also heard about uh, the reasoning behind a tax increase. If we raise taxes now, uh, then we can pay down the debt. And then, you know, there, there's all this debt load uh, in Lubbock. We can pay that off or help pay it off if we raise taxes. Well, what do you say to that? The way municipal bonds are done, and and that's how debt's funded, Chad. The end result is this: if you are if you've bought a municipal bond, that means you're a guaranteed uh, recipient of that interest rate. So they don't allow early payoff until a certain point. And uh, so the, the way the debt is structured, early payoff is not as easy as you paying off your visa or, your, or even your mortgage mm-hmm. or your car. So it, it's, it's hard to explain that in, in just a few minutes. So I'll, I'll try not to bore anyone even what I already have. But we do have the ability to take dollars and put into areas. And you can, Oh, and by the way, you can't, if we have debt on water, you can't take money out of another fund and go just pay for water. It has to be by department. So that really doesn't handcuff you, but it, 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 it limits put, you. It's very, you, it's a very disciplined, approach now what uh what can be done is we can take dollars and start cash funding issues that possibly would be debt funded and councilwoman gibson's plan uh, shows that that can be done with some reserve monies in the water department i'll let her speak to that well, in my plan, um, I, I cash funded $2.9 million worth of projects that would have been bond funded in, in the water department. So I just took some of the excess over reserves and did that and left plenty of money in there for what they're calling for future projects. So, um, so paying cash money for a project? Yes. <laughs> what you, now, that, that's, Brilliant. that's an idea. That, yes, that, isn't that, that it, Stops future debt or, or cuts some of the future debt. Right. And, and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Girl's plan and I believe Councilwoman Joy's plan both had components that were similar in into doing that. So this council is concerned about our debt because it is high. And I go back to the point where I, there's no such thing as good debt, but at least over 450 million of our debt is asset based debt with water 
And these these projects, I mean, we're about 10 years away from a lot of these projects. Allen Henry, Lake Allen Henry, of course, was a very expensive project, but visionary. When you look at the fact that Lake Meredith is at 19%. So I applaud our previous councils and administrations in doing what they did. Yes, we've got that debt, but we've got more water than a lot of cities in Texas. Doesn't mean we don't need to conserve. Let's uh, go to the phone. So we've got about uh, about a minute and a half or so before we have to take the break, and uh, let's get in a, a question real quick. Michael, you're on KFYO. Uh, good morning. I appreciate you all, uh, you know, trying to hold the line on the tax rate, which obviously it has uh, uh, plenty of uh, appraisal creep, and and then of course the thirteen point two nine cents that we traded. Uh, sales tax for property tax would make it be even more if that were not the case. But uh, I, I do disagree on the franchise and pilot fees. I followed this for many, many years, and I can even send you all. I sent a fairly lengthy letter a couple of days ago that was explaining it one more time because LPNL is one thing and probably could be left alone since it could be a standalone uh, private whatever but uh, there is nowhere in ordinances or uh, anywhere policies where any of the franchise and pilot fees on those other four utilities goes to anything but general fund and uh, it is not for access to uh, alleys or purchasing right of ways or any of this other it's been used for everything under the sun over the years but it has no designation on it whatsoever and we're basically on the pilot part charging an internal these internal departments property taxes at whatever the tax rate is on what's considered their assets so as we complete these projects we're paying more and more personal property taxes on those uh, Utilities. So uh, the other part, of course, is on the franchise fee. Anything over three percent, which is all that LPNL goes into the general, two percent of what they have goes to Gateway. So it does have a designation. Hey, but, Michael, I'm gonna uh, let's uh, let the council uh, members respond real quick. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Do y'all want to go ahead and respond to what uh, Michael had to say? Well, as far as the um, franchise fees. All of the franchise fees that come in go to general fund. And so there's a lot that goes into um, where it goes from there. There's a lot of detail that goes into it back, back into, the, it account, into, the, into the accounting. Fund. So um, where all of that goes, there's kind of a trail through there. She, as far as going into the general fund, she is absolutely correct. All of the all of the franchise fees goes into the general fund. We'll uh, go ahead and take the break here on the Chad Hasty Show, uh, visiting with Councilwoman Karen Gibson and also Councilman uh, Jeff Griffith. When we come back, another uh, issue that uh, will be tackled tomorrow night: stormwater, and uh, we'll talk about that uh, as well here on the Chad Hasty Show, News Talk seven ninety KFYO. All right, final segment uh, in studio with Councilman Jeff Griffith and uh, Councilwoman Karen Gibson uh, tomorrow night. City Council will meet and vote on the budget as of right now, how it stands. You have most likely four members of the City Council who are in favor of a uh, pretty large tax increase. And you have three members of the Council, two of them in studio, who are against a tax increase. Uh, let's talk real quick about stormwater. Uh, where are we right now as for stormwater rates in the future? And is the, the refiling of this lawsuit uh, going to have any impact on any discussions that you guys have as a as a council uh, regarding stormwater fees, I haven't been told of any impact it will have as of now. Obviously, um, I will listen to the attorneys and and what they kind of tell us to stay away from, and just watch watch them. And when they say don't say that, we won't say that. But um, I do know that the mayor put that as a work session on for tomorrow. I'm looking forward to hearing what the consultants tell us. From what I understand, they do have some really good scenarios ready for us. I'll be anxious to see what they have. Hopefully it's a hybrid and we can move forward. As I said in the last council meeting, when we started all of this, it certainly wasn't the intent of m myself or anyone that I, that I know of to put anybody out of business or make a hardship on anyone. Um, I still say that impervious surface to me is the way to go. But with the amount of debt that we have, 
it's it's not working, obviously. And so I think what you do is kind of take a step back, go back to square one. Um, the mayor had talked to, uh, I guess, the consultants and us, obviously, about doing kind of a hybrid with a, a base fee and then impervious on top of that to see if that, that would work. And so hopefully they'll bring that to us tomorrow, and hopefully that will work and work well. As far as you know, are we in a scenario where, because right now it's mainly business owners who are upset. That, that That's who you guys have been yes. hearing from. Business the, the residents, a lot of residents, their bills have gone down as far as stormwater. Yes. Are, are we at a, at a point where, okay, if we decrease uh, the cost for business owners, it's going to increase the cost for homeowners out there? I don't know how that's going to work. I had asked to have five tiers in residence instead of four. To There are some really large homes in Lubbock, and so we were kind of putting them in with just the larger homes, but I think they need to kind of be in a class of their own. I mean, we've got some really, really large homes. Mm -hmm. So I had asked... um, to have that fifth tier added, so I mean, and they did do that to so that we could see what that does, I, and spread that out maybe just a little bit more even in the residential side too. Uh, a couple of questions just overall that I've received, uh, you know, uh, uh, about the budget, and uh, where I know we're running low on time, but uh, we'll get to these as quick as possible. Uh, the the first one, this is going to be real easy. Is there a dog park in this finalized budget, Jeff? I'll let you type that one. <laughs> There is not. Uh, that was believe I believe that was misspoke that it was in there, but it was the year before as far as a future project, and I believe they're looking at lower cost ways of bringing the dog park initiative back, but it would be futuristic. It's not immediate, and um, we they even had a place at Clap Park picked out and. Uh, it looked like a very good site as far as I was concerned. but uh, And I'm not against a dog park, but I am in favor of a starter dog park, if you catch my drift. so Well, where Amarillo can put in three dog parks as to what was proposed, the one dog park. For 203000 Yeah, that, that that seemed a bit pricey, I think. So no dog park in this budget. Right now, yeah. there, there is not one in the budget. Okay, uh, another one uh, received uh, an email yesterday uh, about this uh, with Lita funding going up for Lita Market Lubbock. Uh, where are we we on that? Uh, that was one of the one of the things that uh, some people uh, sent an email about. Jeff's got his the, book. I'll let him actually answer that so he can um, have true numbers The big for book you. of budgets. The book of budgets. Jeff, he has his it's budget. a 10-pound book that Jeff is carrying around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, if it would just help me lose weight, I'd carry it all the time. <laughs> now, the deal is that uh, it actually, the property tax allocation is down 8%. Uh, folks need to realize that, Lita, if you're going to fund a team for economic development, you've got to have monies available to it. And uh, don't just fund a partial team. And in the past, I think we've done a good job. Uh, it, it's a lot of folks are upset that we have Lita. At the same time, it's brought some very good businesses to our city and, and help our city grow. And we'll continue to, in my, in, in my opinion. But back to the real dollars of it, uh, no, it's actually down. And w- the city manager, Mr. Loomis, took out a, almost, well, it's, uh, 380 somewhat thousand out of Lita Market Lubbock's budget to go to city bus to fund it where it was shorted on grant funding. So to to make city bus whole, that money was moved away. That shorted it, but it's down from uh, actually the past three years. Uh, Let me ask you something else about uh, Lita and Market Lubbock and, and something else that was asked, and it was about incentives for businesses to move downtown. Uh, Talk to us a, a little bit about that, just kind of in a nutshell, if you can. And is Lita trying to get outside businesses to move from, you know, outside of Lubbock into downtown, or are these for existing businesses, let's say, you know, Councilwoman, maybe in your district, to move into downtown and get an incentive to do that, uh, or or both? How does that work? Possibly both. I know they have a lot of projects going on, and a lot of um, there's a lot of movement downtown. 
So um, I, I know they're talking to a, a lot of people. I don't know exactly. We get we get project names. We don't get the businesses. So I mean, we get like funny names for the projects. We don't actually know what the businesses are. So I can't answer to your question whether it's existing businesses or businesses from out of town until that actually comes to fruition. We don't know what the business is. Like I say, they have like all code names that we get so that there's not a conflict right. with the business and in case it gets out. Uh, obviously, council meeting going on tomorrow night. Uh, uh, you two along with, uh, and I'm going to assume the mayor, uh, not in favor of a tax increase. He is not in favor. Right. Uh, what do people need to do? Uh, citizens who are out there, I've heard from citizens, I'm sure both of you have heard from citizens who do not want a tax increase. In order to get their voice heard, what, what do they need to do? You know, I would say come sign up. Sign up and, and speak to the council. This The council is very open to listening, always has been, and this council is very open, and they do listen. Um doesn't mean they're going to vote that way, but they're, I have found that this council has been very open to listening to the people and talking to them and asking questions, asking good questions. And they've, they've always been very open to citizens coming in. I've been, um, a little disappointed this year, especially we've had two, maybe three people come and speak and that's, that's been on. So it's kind of surprised me that with this tax increase and with us actually having the increase of the full rollback that we haven't had anybody hardly come to speak. So that's been um, not, not really disappointing, but surprising, I think is the word to use. Absolutely. Uh, Councilman Karen Gibson, uh, Councilman Jeff Griffith, appreciate y'all's time uh, for coming in today, talking to us a little bit about the budget and uh, y'all's plan for no tax increase. It sounds good to me. Uh, and I think to a lot of the listeners out there, and uh, hopefully we can get some people to show up and to uh, try and convince other members of the council to uh, go along and say no tax increase is needed. Appreciate y'all's time today. Thank you for having us. Uh, let's go to the phones and Steve. Steve, what's happening? Chad, hey. uh, what, at first of all, good morning, and thanks for your service, our public service. Um, the Colboro thing, that was Jay Leno. He was sabotaging that first bit. <laughs> so, um, but when it comes down to, uh, I, and again, I'm not trying to beat up any one person on the city council, but I personally am sick and tired of hearing, yeah, come sign up and talk. <clears throat> we, we love to hear you. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> well, you know what? I also love to see. Well, I also love to hear music, and I also love to hear my dog bark. But does that, does that mean I really want them or want to hear it bark? I, I, you know, it would be different if the city council would actually listen. Well, to just listening to people talk. Jeff, Steve, let me say this: um, when the smoking ordinance was proposed in Lubbock, you remember that. Yes, sir. And obviously, I was a very vocal opponent of that. There were there were four people on that city council uh, who were ready to vote in favor of that overreaching ordinance, and there were so many people who showed up to city hall, and so many people who placed phone calls. Uh, I, I'm telling you, one of those council members switched because of that pressure. And so, do they listen every single time? Absolutely not. But if you just stay home and you don't try, uh, th- then it's almost like, okay, if, if you stayed home and you didn't vote for Mitt Romney, don't complain yeah. about Barack Obama being reelected. If you don't do anything, if you don't participate, then you don't get to complain. Well, but, uh, and I love how she made the comment, you know, come, you know, we may not always vote. And, and I would say it's probably less than 1% of the time, do they, you know, in the Smoky Orange, is a very good, you know, it was a very big thing. But at the same time, Chad, I mean, I, I, I've done it with the city council as well as at Midland, as well yeah. as at Lubbock. I, I just, and of course, I'm not going to say at home, but I think our public airways, like you're doing right here, has more impact than going down, in my opinion, wasting time and talking to them face-to-face. I'll even send email, you know, to specific uh, city council persons. And you actually said, you know, it was because of, the outcry and the outreach of the people. I actually heard that city council person 
change their vote because of death threats. I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> don't, don't take that seriously. <laughs> well, I look, I, I think I think that uh, you know, with, uh, with with the council and and look, obviously doing a show. Uh, yes, well, we, we I, I think we have a great impact on uh, on on how this city uh, council sometimes votes. Uh, but I don't want that to take away from absolutely, especially when it comes to a tax increase. Yeah, people should show up. Now, at the end of the day, if uh, and I'm just going to throw a name out there, okay? If Jim Gurlt, uh votes with the liberals on this city council, he should absolutely be thrown out of office. I agree. Uh, now, I already believe he should be thrown out of office, but especially now, if he continues to go with the liberals, he should be thrown out of office uh, when Election Day comes around. If he runs again, I don't know if he will. Uh, so go down to City Hall, and, and, and if he doesn't listen, uh, in my opinion, that's just another reason why uh, people in, in his district should, you know, go shopping for somebody else. Steve, I've got to get going. Gotcha. Thank, thanks, thanks for the man. call, man. Have a good one out there. Let's go back to the phones. Danny, you're on KFYO. Hey, good morning, Chad. I just got, I, I meant to try to call in uh, while they were still on, but I didn't get a chance to. Um, maybe I've missed out on all the information, uh, not paying attention or whatever, but what is the plan specifically for uh, the Omni building? Citizens Tower, whatever they want to call it, is it to move City Hall there? It's going to. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to obviously they've they've got to redo it, uh, renovate it. They're going to move City yeah. Hall, and the grand plan is to move uh, basically every city office, LPNL, every you know every city building will be moved okay. into that tall building, and then the current City Hall will become the new police station after renovations. Okay, and so then what about the current police station? I guess I can sell it. You know, just, uh, just let it sit vacant and like, like the Omni building did. Well, I, you know, I'm sure there would be somebody who would buy it. Well, because we I remember the it's, Omni Well, the Omni <laughs> building, I think, had some more issues <laughs> with it. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. The Omni building, I, I'm sorry, but a $50 million expense, uh, I just, uh, it was kind of like whenever they bought the, uh, the old South Beach Club and they wanted to they build this wonderful new uh, visitor center. Right. And they paid like $600,000 more than the asking price yeah. for the for, for this building that they eventually tore down and moved the Buddy Holly statue and walked space to. I mean, it, the city just basically, and it doesn't matter who's on the council and, and which term were, were in place at the time, they, they just kind of fly by the seat of their pants and just go, oh, well, this sounds better. Let's just do this. After we've already bought it and everything, I don't like that idea. Let's just do this instead. And I just get tired of the whole the whole runaround of, well, this is our plan. And then some other council, they go, well, actually, we're going to do this instead. And yeah, in, I'm, in the I'm, meantime, our money's being wasted. I'll say this. If, the, if it's done right, and I'm going to put an asterisk there, okay, if it's done right, it will probably cost less than what the grand plan was of building a whole new city hall, because that was a plan to build a new city hall and to build a state of the art, brand new police station. And, and they were talking hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, for both of those. And when you're talking about renovating, renovating two buildings, uh, it, it may be a little bit better in the long run as far as that goes. But, uh, yeah. you know, Danny, they, they have to do it the right way, and, and hopefully they will. Danny, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Have a good day out there. All right, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.